What's up guys, Black Wolves here and welcome back to another video and today we're back on Pro Stack Avenger 2020 for episode number 4, I believe, of Redemption Ride, our Williams Martini career mode. Um, today's episode, we'll have the Ronde van Vlaanderen, Park Roubaix, Amstel Gold Race, Flesh Wallen, Liege Baston Liege and Pais Vasco, or it's Sulia. It's gonna be a very packed episode, but then we'll have Romandie and then the Giro. So... We're going to take everything in and hopefully have a decent episode. However, we do start with the Ronde. So, I mean, <laughs> we all know what I like and what I think about the Ronde. Let's go. All right, we're on the way for this race. Minus one for Alex Smith Canizales, which kind of sucks. Plus four for Ballerini. Uh, and he will be my leader today. 80 cobbles, 78 in hills. Yeah, Davide is the only rider in my team able to do something. Um, also, 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 also. I've slightly modified my uh, my my um, recording setup. Um, I now have the mic in front of me instead of like on a boom arm. Um, I think, I mean, technically speaking, it should work better. All right. Uh, I know like the previous recording had some cuts here and there um, because I played around with the, uh, the the noise gate and I put my threshold too low. But th no, I mean, we're entering technical terms there and shit. And you lot don't care about it, but yeah, sorry about the yesterday's episode, which were a bit uh, choppy that time, I guess. Uh, hopefully, it's been fixed. I will only be able to, to see it po uh, post-recording. But yeah, uh, Ronde has started though. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I hate cobbles, especially Ronde van Vlaanderen. Rodrigo Stelich, Elie Vianney, Ryan Mullen, Pierre Luperichon, Ruben Guerrero, decent stats. Uh, Diego Lissi, Tim Merlea, Nato Muscatet. Rob Stannard, Joachim Roras, uh, Camille Hadek, Julian Duval, Rémi Mertz, Luke Vliegen, Eduardo Affini, and Alex Sigouja are in uh, the breakaway, but the peloton doesn't look too keen on letting uh, these uh, X amount of riders go. There's been some attacks. Uh, John Degenkolb has attacked alongside Emil de Rent, Stan de Wilf, and Stefan Kung have also made a move to join the, the lead breakaway as we approach the Uruk Farmont for the first time today. One of my favorite clans on PCM, that's a lie. Um, Ballerini is protected by Andrea Vendramme. Alex Smith Canizales is protected by Owen Dole. Um, I back Alex Smith Canizales for like a par -Roubaix. but for a race like the Ronda, I, I do not see it. I don't think he's going to do anything today. Uh, but Ballerini... I mean, he's basically my only chance, I believe. Um, so I'm going to try and, like, care about him. Uh, not care about him, but, like, be somewhat uh, somewhat careful of what I do with him. Alex Smith can go on the right to avoid blocking Andrea Vendramme. Uh, we're just going to maintain 70 for now, I think. I think that should be fine. As long as there's no move in the peloton, I am safe. We've made Odu Farmont, and we now have to make the Paterberg. 14 riders in the leading group. Uh, it's usually what happens after this climb. Ballerini, Smith, Canizales, Dole, and uh, Vendramme still in the leading group, though. As we enter the Paterberg, we're going to catch Owen Dole. Sorry, Owen Dole is going to catch Stefan Kung and Matteo Moschetti. Surprising to see uh, Stefan Kung already out, considering uh, his teammates, for his breakaway teammates, if I can call them uh, like that, have joined the leading group, Stan Wolf and John de Gencourt, or at least John de Gencourt is attempting to do so. Uh, Ulysse has dropped, so has Aimé de Rennes and Pierre-Luc Perrichon. It's not surprising to see Pierre-Luc Perrichon, he's a climber and not a classic man. Alright, up next, Koppenberg. Uh, we're just going to have a packed schedule until the end now. We're in the Eichenberg now, uh, and sadly, Alex Smith got dropped in, uh, I think it was the Koppenberg, but, like, he wasn't far down. He was 20 seconds behind. Uh, but everyone in, in his group came back, except him. So, uh, that's quite sad here. Yeah. I'm going to try my best to come back with a Wendell. And that's first if I can get rid of Melkert, this lad from Lotus Sudal blocking me. We've got the Eichenberg coming up. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. If I need to come, if I come back, I have to come back now. I can't wait longer. Uh, Laporte and Modelo have been dropped. Ballerini is nearing the front of the peloton for the Eichenberg. 1 minute 40 for the breakaway. Uh, a group of 10 with one rider in pursuit in John Negate Corby's Nefer. He uh, hasn't been able to make it to the top. 
Alex Smith came back thanks to Owen Dull. The question is, can he hold on in this group? Uh, that is a whole another story. Ballerine made it first though in the first group. That's great. Owen Dull made it. So did Alex Smith. Can he's Alex? Absolutely perfect. What well, is gone. 36 kilometers remaining and Wout Van Aert is gone. Wow. That's really early. That's really early. He went um, in, I think, Leberg. I think that's how it's called. If I can put my mouse on it. There we go, Leberg. Uh, now it's going to be quite flat until the next uh, Kappelmuir, then Uduk Farmer. No, Bosberg. What variant is this? Is this a variant without every single pattern bag? Oh, that interests me. That's quite nice now. I do like it. I'm pissed. I used energy because uh, I went to get water and I got blocked by team. Well, not blocked, but team earlier get dropped. Got dropped. And Balerini got slightly co in the uh, in, in the crosswind, I guess, or in the crossfire. Anthony Turge is, is leading the way. Oliver Nazan came back on the Frenchman at the front to make it. A two-man uh, group with 17 kilometers remaining. We've got the Kapalmuir in just a kilometer now. Ballerini is in a top position and in decent shape as well. That is, um, I mean, it has to be noticed compared to uh, what I usually uh, usually do on these races. There we go, we're just going to give um, automatic to everyone. Come on, Davide. Come on, Davide, make it. Make it with everyone. You were Nils Polit, Benoit, Steuven van Aert. Come on. Ballerini made it with the first group. We've got the Bosberg coming up now. Lampart and Nazan are gone. Peter Sagan is not pacing. Okay, I'm going to take point. Uh, I feel like I have decent legs and I can spare some energy. Well, I can use some energy in the Bosberg. We're going to try and catch Nazan and Lampard, the two Belgians at the front right now of this Ronde van Vlaanderen. Come on, Davide. If I can come back on them two guys, that would be great. We're going to make a little attack, just a tad, to come back. Even, why not bridge? There we go. Perfect. Ballerini, Von Aert. No, sorry. Ballerini, Lampard, Nazan. Then Von Aert, Van Der Poel, Steuven, Benoît, Chagan, Van Maart and Gilbert. Eight kilometers to go. I have never been in a better position to win a Rondo von Blanderen with a B-Tech rider. Nazan looks dead. Uh, should I pace, actually? Well, I'm actually going to take relays, see what I can do. Because Toven is going to do the same. 5k to go. Lampart and Nazan look knackered, especially Nazan. Behind the, co the collaboration is working. Tish Benoit, Pete Sagan. They're trying to come back, they're trying all they can. Lampard taking a relay for me, yeah. Thank you. Come on. Oh, Pete Sagan trying to maybe seize a move here. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. 10 kilometers. Uh, 10 kilometers? 1.5 kilometers, sorry. We're going to take the... Sh wait, hold up. Lampard, 73, 73, 73. I'm going to start my sprint now. I'm going to start... Yeah, I'm starting my sprint now. Come on, Ballerini. Come on, Davide. Come on. Come on. He's got the legs. Ballerini. Yves Lampard comes back towards the end. But Davide Ballerini wins the Ronde for Vlanderen. What the fuck? How have I done? <laughs> Let's go. Davide Ballerini wins the Ronde for Vlanderen. Ahead of Yves Lampard, Oliver Nazen, Jasper Stoyven, Wout von Aert. What? What? <laughs> Let's go! What? How? How? <laughs> how have I, out of everyone, won a cobbled classic? How have I won the Ronde Flanderen? Sure, it's not the toughest Ronde you've ever seen, right? But I don't care, do not remove the credit, right? I've won the Ronde of Flanderen with Davide Ballerini, with William Smaltini. This is one of my greatest wins on PCM. I'm genuinely in shock. I've actually won the Ronde with a 75 cobble Italian rider. And the thing is, I've actually played well. That's the main thing. Like, the, the amount of chances I had to get dropped here were through the roof. You know, pacing in the Bosberg to come back on Nazan and Lampard at the time seemed like something I might have regret. Or might I regret it? But I think that's what got me the win. Because I maintained that 14, 15 second lead until like the final sprint. And then it was just a question of whether I could hold off Yves Lampard and Oli Nazen, which I did. Because had I not done that, right, Von Aert 
Demar, Van der Poel, they would have sprinted and most likely beaten me in a sprint. Also, whilst I'm still on the results screen, I'm just going to show you uh, that I am still in extreme, right? I did not cheat or lower the difficulty. I mean, like, I, I, I know, I've managed to lose Paul Robert easy, so, like, there was no point. All right, it's Studio Basque Country. Uh, we're going to bring an interesting uh, lineup. Alessandro Van Zeeu, Chris Pyle, Lenny Ryder, Thomas Pitcock, Hans Hulber, Greg Walters, and Simone Velasco. Um, Van Zeeu has his fitness peak, but this race is mostly going to be used to get uh, Tom Pitcock some, um, some fitness and some race days before the Ardennes. And just like in Catalonia, Thomas Pitcock is absolutely nowhere. Uh, and just like in Catalonia, Alessandro Fanciu is going to be my leader. Um, but the issue is, there is a time trial at the end of this. It's Zulia Basque country. And um, I mean, I, I would have liked not to have a time trial. It definitely increases my chances of, uh, of winning. Or at least it gives me any sort of hope of winning. Uh, Hugh Garcia is currently pacing in this climb, though, in the Alto de Orendain. <clears throat> Fanchu is safe. Chris Pye leading the way. We've got 20 kilometers left. Final climb of the Alto de Gaincha. Chris Pye is trying uh, to increase his rhythm, but it seems that Eddie Dunbar, Remco Venepoel, and Ruben Guerrero have also thought of that, and they're increasing it a bit more than I am. However, however, we do have Fan Seiyu, right? We, we know he's good on that sort of terrain. Uh, we, we know what he can do. We've seen it done before. Hopefully, we can come back here on, uh, on Ruben Guerrero and on the front of this group. Chris Pye is knackered. Is knackered sorry. Oh, I, I stopped fancy. That's a nail on me. Are they going to follow? Let's see. Little attack. Just to make the downhill. Do I have a gap? Yes or no? The answer appears to be no. All right. Let's rest Fanseyu. Let's use Chris Pye for the final five kilometers of this stage. Let's use the gel on Fanseyu. Actually, hold up. I'm pretty sure they can't catch me. Yeah, there we go. They won't be able to catch me. They will not be able to catch me, and that's absolutely brilliant. Let's take the level Philippe with Chris Pye. And let's monitor the situation from down here. 1k to go. Fanseyu will take the win. Ala Philippe hasn't started. Or hasn't bothered starting a sprint. It's an Italian win today in Ordizia ahead of Tale Pogacar and David Godu. Unless he's been overtaken, he has by Julien Lafilly. Right, yet another win for Fancy. Love that. We've got 17 kilometers left in this stage. I've got Hans Sulebe leading the peloton right now, a 92 man peloton. Uh, the stage doesn't appear to be very tough on paper. Uh, but it somehow created quite a lot of gaps, and as you can see by the fitness of Greg Walters and Lenny Ryder, who've protected uh, my leaders the, the entire day, they are completely dead. Mats Pedersen on the attack with Guerrero Chavez. It's not an attack, they're just increasing the rhythm drastically. Wow, okay. We still have Tom Pitcock. Uh, I mean, it's a stage that suits him a bit more than yesterday. Also, he does have a plus one, so that kind of helps. Uh, but... Right now, the aim is just to set Fanseyu to win uh, comfortably at the front. He does not have any gap on... Yeah, I, that was 15 seconds yesterday. You're taking the pace. All right. Well, then. Uh, if I'm not on the podium, but Pugacar is, he takes the jersey. Uh, or if Alaphilippe wins, he takes the jersey. So how about, right, we don't let that happen. And we try to do uh, what we do best in this episode. I mean, <laughs> two stages, two wins. I can't really complain. About that, Hans Silber is going to increase his rhythm even more as Guerrero does the same. Michelanda already in second place of the group. Is he pacing for himself or is Mark Hirschi here? Let's take a look. Uh, team DSM, that Sunweb. Sunweb, Mark Hirschi is handed here. Okay, 7k to go. We've nearly done everything when it comes to the climb. Molima just crashed. Bauka, Bauka, Bauka was in the leading group. He is now down. Is he withdrawing? He is not. Let's go back to the front of the race. Chris Pye for the final 100 meters of this hill. Fancy you pit cock in the wheel. Schachmann struggling to follow, but he is here. Out of teammates, but he is well and truly here. Let's use the gel on Chris Pye. Fancy you and Tom Pitcock. All right. Pitcock is by far the best sprinter. So we're obviously going to go for him. We're going to start the sprint now with, uh, with Fancy you. There we go. There goes the leaders, 
there goes the leader, sorry, of this It's Your Basque Country. Thomas Peacock will take the lead in this left hand. Can we hold on to the likes of Shahman, Marc Hirsch, and Julien Lafilippe? Yes, yes, we can. And because there was that many corners, it's going to be a 1-2. It is indeed. Fancy you. Back-to-back -back wins on the Basque Country. And Tom Peacock in second place. Brilliant. Approaching the end of stage 3 of the Super Basque Country. Uh, flat stage. Well, I mean flat stage. According to PCM, this is a flat stage between Urda Zubi and Vitoria Gas stage. Um, Chris Pyle and Ryder and all of them lot can have their fun. We're just going for Fancy U and Tom Peacock today. Actually, 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 let's do something quite funny. Alright. Hans Ulebe, mate. Accelerate. Who's in my wheel? Gorski and then Diego Ulisi. They aren't gonna cause me any trouble. And there goes Fancy. There goes Ulebe. Alright. Let's have fun. Let's go into downhill with Fancy U leading the, like, leading the way. Don't tell me that Gorski is gonna chase me down. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not in that. And Fancy U has been caught up. Fancy U has been caught up, sadly. Alright, well then. We're going for Thomas Pitcock again. 3k to go. I've panicked. I've made a mistake. Hold up. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. There we go. Perfect. Hans Uh I, I most likely have lost the stage now by what I just did. Um, that little second of, uh, of misclick might have cost me a decent result. It has indeed. It's a win today for Mats Pedersen ahead of Diego Lissi, Maxi Schachmann. Who takes four seconds and therefore uh, jumps into second place of the Utah Basque Country? Thomas Picard comes in fourth place today. Final 10 kilometers of stage four, uh, the famous stage of Arate, of the Alto di Arate. Um, I've been struggling the entire stage to maintain fancy in the leading group and to maintain energy, as you can see with the rest of my riders. Uh, things haven't gone very swimmingly. Chris Pai is going to drop a lot in, in the GC, but right now our only matter, or the only thing that matters, sorry, is Alessandro Fanseu. We're going to start the Alto de Arate by taking a right hander right now. If I could not get Blah Baguero, that would be great. Thank you very much, Ruben. All right, come on. 33 riders, 5 kilometers of climb. Thomas Pitcock, Fanseu are the only representants. Representants? That's just a French word I've put with an English accent. Are the only riders for Willemis Martini. Attack on the right. Simon Yates going for a move. Immediately followed by the current runner-up in the GC, Maximum Schachmann, the world champion. Neora Quintana, Egan Bernal, and Tadej Pogacar aren't too far down. Very good attack. Puncture for Fanseyu. At the worst possible moment, Alessandro Fanseyu has a puncture. That's my GC gone right now. Now that I'm, I'm finished. Because they're not going to slow down. They're not going to slow down. I'm going to need to increase my rhythm as much as possible. But Alessandro Fancy has just lost the Etiola Basque Country. Yeah. No, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Yates is going to win the stage. Very good climb by the, by the Brits. I'm not sure I would have made it in the first group, to be honest. Lorenz de Plus, Krovaik, Bernal, Schachmann, Pogacar, 20 seconds behind. Then Dumoulin, Guerrero, Higuita, Sivakov, Burman, Alaphilippe, Tunsir, Chiz, Aguirre. And Alessandro... Uh, oh, sorry. Alessandro Fancy, 1 minute 40 down. Fuck, man. Fuck. I hadn't planned on being in this situation right here, but uh, I also hadn't planned on recording this stage. But stage 5 of Pass Country, and we have a very decent shout out winning today. Oddly enough. Nope, because Alaphilippe launched the sprint way too early. Julien fam, why? Why couldn't you wait just like, I don't know, just a bit longer? And Schachmann wins ahead of Alaphilippe and Tim Wellens. Therefore, Schachmann is now. 8 seconds behind Simon Yates. Fanseu, though, is going to jump a few people in the GC. Some trial in this Itzua Basque Country. I'm counting on Ansu I have no idea how to make this time trial. So we're going to wing it, most likely. Uh, I've got Lenny Rider as like a... Um, um, how is it called? I completely forgot. The word in French is témoin. Um, but as a, like, as a test, I guess. He's my, he's my benchmark. There we go. Um, I think I can go 77 actually with a hand. Should I try 88? That was the climb. 6%, max of 9, 3.2 kilometers. Watch this one. This one's a bit less. All right, we'll go 77 just in case. See how Lenny handles the climb. Um, but yeah, then I'm, I'm counting slightly on Greg Walters potentially, then Chris Pye, 
uh, and fans of you who managed to come back in the top 10 yesterday will get out of it. Actually, I mean, I was going to say I can't lose 140, but I lost 240 on a 9km flat time trial in Italy, so I'm ready for anything with this man. Also, Hans is uh, well and truly good. In the second climb, uh, he is in the lead. In uh, well, the second checkpoint, I guess. We're now in uh, the Alto de Santa Eufemia. The key is to use all the energy at the summit. I feel like I might be on course with that one part, which would be nice. Reichenbach has had a stunning, stunning time trial, especially like for someone who doesn't do time trial well and also doesn't do downhills at all. He's a minute 11 quicker than Florian Stork. That's impressive, to say the least. When the downhill, all right, recovering time it is. Technically, the downhill shouldn't... I mean, I'm not going to lose time on a downhill. It, 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 that, that, that can't happen. What I can happen, though, is that I'm going to lose a few here on the final 500 meters. But Hans Hülleber across the line takes second what? I'm sorry. Wait. Hold up. What's his name? How? He's got 69 time trial. I have 85. Um, um, yeah, 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 yeah. TJ Van Garderen just put a minute on Hans Hülleber. Someone in the comments pointed out that Hülleber is like the most on uh, regular rider. And that's extremely true. Fancy across the line is going to lose time, that's for sure. He was two minutes behind. And he's going to be 244 down on Garen Thomas, who wins, well, most likely, actually, Bernal. Can he make it 1 2 for Neos? He can. He's going to take the lead. Ruben Garo is going to take a fat L. Julian as well. Schachmann as well. Simon Yates as well. What's the gap with Bernal? 107. Bernal might be doing the greatest comeback. My guy might be Houdini. Who knows? Alain Philippe across the line. 52 seconds, he's gone. All right, Bernal needs 59 seconds on Maximilian Schachmann. Can he get that? Maxi Schachmann against Egan Bernal across the line. Is the gap above 59? 113, it well and truly is. The gap needs to be 107 on Simon Yates or above to uh, win Basque Country. 48 seconds, Simon Yates wins the Itzulia Basque Country. Fancy you ninth, let's go! We've got a top 10, come on! And I was preparing the team for Barouet. Uh, Alex Smith has upgraded a... Oh, nice upgrades, hold up. I'm not going to see them great, thank you. Um, well, he's increased in heels. No, 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 sorry. Flat, sprint, barudo, stamina. Cobbles, he's got a plus two. Has he got a plus two, like, basically everywhere, except mountain and, like, time trial? And downhill as well got slightly better secondaries all right uh, you never know with a plus five I've, i'm i might do, <laughs> i don't know i've won the ronde from london and i might as well win power over today bless you for alex smith canizales uh i'm gonna be extremely upfront with you this is my second time doing this power over. uh the first one i mean alec had a plus three uh he punctured four times before the trou d'armer and then twice after that so yeah, I figured I was just going to redo it because I feel like there is something to do or something to be done. And I, I would genuinely like to do well in Parbe for once. I actually care about this team in this career mode. So yeah, the only downside, Ballerini had a plus five. He now has a zero. We're entering Avedui. Therefore, we are soon going to reach La Trou de Rambert. This is where the first puncture happened. Uh, actually, wait, no. No, no, no. Did I have five and then one? Or maybe no, I had three and two, I think. Yeah, I had three and two. This is where the last puncture happened before the Troué for, uh, for Alec. Alec currently losing a bit of ground, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Puncture for Seb Van Marker. That's going to be an issue for the leader of CCC Adidas. What an odd, like, name pairing. They're literally two shoe brands. Browns? Two shoe brands, right? One's good, one's Polish. I love you Polish viewers, I swear. Trois d'Ambert time. Alec, decent place. Ballerini, 
is not my leader now. Um, am I going for Vendrame? Okay, I am. Uh, Owindle will be my uh, my actual teammate for the remainder of the stage for Alec, but everything should be fine for our Canadian in the Trois d'Armer. A puncture happened in this sector. This time, Hans Sulebe, perfect. Still nothing touching Alex Smith Canizales. I'm touching wood. My desk is actually made of wood, so I am well and truly having contact with the wooden surface of this desk. Therefore, I'm hoping that the chance can come my way. Vendrame uh, is struggling, so we're going to have him protect uh, Barberini, I guess. Fuck it. All right, come on. 73k. Next sector, Warner Brion. This is where I decided to rage quit in, in the previous iteration of this battle. Where Alec, right, lad, do not proceed to puncture. Someone did that. Did someone from Dukanang just had a had a stinker? Yep, Casper Asgreen. Goodbye, son. Come on, Alec. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jenik Chibar is storming, and he just lost Casper Asgreen. I'm loving it. Aside by Niki Terpstra, very well. Uh, let's have Ballerini protect Alec. I'm guessing now I don't need any more teammates. Did Asgreen come back? Let me take a look. Let's take a quick look. Stiba, Lampard. No sign of Kaspar Asgreen. I'm guessing there's a move, or I'm seeing at least an acceleration. Let's try to follow it purely rhythm wise. Uh, there is a group behind trying to come back with Sylvain Dillier. All of them low. Asgreen is there. So is Brent van Meur. Probably some decent couple guys from Belgium here. There we go. Alright, a few attacks have gone out. Philippe Gilbert, the former Paroubet winner, is gone with Tish Benoit close to him. Alex Smith is well and truly in good hands with Davide Ballerini just ahead of the road. We're approaching the sector of Oshi des Orchi à Bercé. Or Bercé, sorry. Uh, I love French names. Especially northern French names. They're, they're stupendous. Okay, let's let Krav Anderson pace for now, because that's what he's good at. And then I'm expecting to see a move by this man right here, called Wout. The later the move, the better. He has accelerated very well. He's now stopped. Monson Pével coming up. This is where things are going to get tasty. And I'm not talking about a famous burger from McDonald's. Jasper Stoven going for the move. Wout van Aert follows. All right. Let's stay to this, in this group. Mathieu van Apple goes. There goes Gilbert, Nils Pelit, and the rest of the uh, the rest of us are a tad behind. Let's lower my rhythm. Anyone gonna uh, wishing to take point on that? No. Interesting. Gilbert has not been able to follow the moves. All right. Let's try to recover energy as much as possible until the next sector. The gap is thirty seconds and rising. 50 seconds and rising. I don't know what to do. Everyone's dead. Is there a couple sector? All right, let me attack here. Let's attack here. I'll, I'll see if I can do anything. Alex Smith can is trying to go for a move in the sector of Pontibo. Why is everyone following now? Why? All right, you wouldn't fucking relay me before, and now you're all following my attack. The good thing is, we, come back, we came back on Van Aert, Steuven, Van Der Poel to a now 20 second gap, but they're still not relaying me. Not long left, and this is about 26 kilometers remaining. One minute is the lead for the breakaway. Breakaway, I've seen an attack. Jasper Stoven von Apple going for a move. Von Art follows. De this group is pissing me off. It really is. Because they're not pacing, but as soon as I am, now everyone's on it. Careful the lava. It's the final chance. If, if there's any hope of coming back on these three riders, it is now or never. Von Art, Stoven and Von Der Poel have not used any energy. Let's be honest, in this uh, this run, the fact that there's still like someone like Amun Grandal Janssen or Hugo Hofstetter in this group truly means that the rhythm has been very much below average. Next sector, Gruson, is going to be a very mm, easy road here. Yeah, no, we're not, we're, we're not going to do anything. Sadly, we definitely had the legs. I didn't think I should follow the move on the car for the lab, but that was my mistake. And that's why we're going to lose today. Uses the gel on Alex Smith Canizales. 120 for the breakaway. Jasper Stoven, Van der Poel, Van Aert able to start their sprint as soon as they want. Oh, I swear to God, if all of them start attacking now. Like, this makes no sense, Nikita Elstra. You're stupid. 
Uh, let me just go back up. What's happening up front? Oh, Von Art starting to uh, to maybe struggle a bit. I mean, it would make sense, right? He, he has in like done battle which is not an easy race at all. Let's try to take the will of the vampire here for us. Uh, Steuven, Van der Poel, Van Aert. The winner is with Van Aert. Ahead of Van der Poel, Jasper Steuven, Nils Polis comes home in 5th place. Nazan, where's Alec? 7th place today for Alec. I definitely had the legs to do better. I just played badly. I played well in the round though. I played badly today. Lineup for the MTL Gold Race. Thomas Pitcock, Togo Gnart, Lenny Rada, Simone Velasco, Andre Vendrame, Connor Swift, Davide, Ballerini. I mean, I can sometimes win it, but lately I've been, um, shit, <laughs> we'll say, on the Amstel. So hopefully today can be a change, but I'm not liking the initial parkour. Plus two for Pitcock, plus one for Togo Gnart, plus one for Lenny Rada. It is indeed the variant I hate the most. For the Amstel. Um, so yeah. Do not look forward to a good result. Final 5 kilometers of this Amstel Gold Race. Um, nothing really happened. Thomas Pitcock did not place himself very well. Uh, at, at one point. And therefore we're now uh, very far. I mean he's not going to be my leader for the stage. We'll try to go for Teo. There is no chance I am winning this. I, I mean let's be real. Right. I cannot win this today, but I can try. So we're not in the will of Tom Pitcock. Thomas is currently t killing Teo. I didn't, I, you know what, I didn't miss much. I didn't miss much. It's going to be a top five finish for Tom, or at least a top six. Ala Philippe, Charman, Godu, Hershey, Formolo, Pitcock, Sagan, Van Der Poel, Teo Gunnart, and Ivan Souza. Lineup for La Flèche Wallonne, Pitcock, Gunnart, Ryder, Vendramé, Velasco, Pai, Ballerini. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same lineup as the one on the Amstel. It's an. Is that the original variant? I don't think it is. Unless that's the code de Chorave, but right now I can't tell. But I don't think it is. I think that's a. That's an. Is that a fantasy variant? It might be a fantasy variant. Plus two for Pitcock, plus three for Velasco, plus three for Terra, plus three for Lenny Ryder. Come on. Okay, this race is an actual shit show. Like, it, it's unplayable. There's so little moments for flat terrain that you cannot give water to anyone. Like, I asked Velasco to give me water when he had full energy, and that was approximately 50 kilometers ago. It took him 35 kilometers to deliver water, and he has no energy. Ballerini crashed, he's never been able to come back. Like, this is, honestly, one of the worst things I've ever had to play on PCM. You cannot rest for a single second, otherwise you're gone. You know what, Pitcock might be strong, but he doesn't have the legs to hold on in, like, an entire stage with, like, elevation. Because one cowberg or is it the Milderby? No, it's the Cowboy. No, it's the Milderby. What am I on about? It is Milderby. One single wall of Milderby and the guy was done. He's got no energy left and he was being protected as well. And he was in a good position at the start. He just doesn't have the legs to do so. Lady Rider is gone. Thomas Pitcock is the only rider now able to do something to protect Togi Gennart, who will be my leader today. Come on, Thomas. Come on, Thomas. This is more of your climb rather than it is Teo, but we move. Attack on the left. Davide Formolo going for the move. The Italian rider of Etihad. Right. Alaphilippe goes. Roglic, Schachmann, Pavel Sivakov. Every rider that wants to win today needs to follow the move of Formolo. Teo is holding on very well right now. Perfect. Let's use the gel on our Englishman. 2.3k. We're going to have a left, then a right hand, I believe. And the right hander is going to be a long one towards the final climb of today. Our final time on the Mur de Huy. Thomas Pitcock has started. So has Julian Lafayette, so has Charman, so have actually everyone has decided to go. It does make sense, all right, as it is the Mur de Huy. I'm usually not good on this, uh, on, on this climb. And today will be no different. It's a win for Julian Lafayette ahead of Maxi Charman, David Formolo, 
Tilga Gunnars comes home in fourth position. It's not too bad, I guess. Sivukov, Dan Martin, Roglic, Mohoric, and Thomas Peacock to round up the top 10. Final lineup of the episode, Liege Baston Liege. Out of the three Ardennes Classic, it is for me the easiest one to win. So we'll try today once again with Thomas Peacock, Velasco, Vendrame, Chris Pileni Rada, and Davide Mbalerini. I honestly hate this game. Velasco just crashed. Velasco, who is, for the first time to this year, my leader. For fuck's sake. I don't get why they're all pacing. They've literally been sprinting for 45 kilometers. It does not make sense. It just doesn't. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I wish I did, but I don't. Velasco is never going to come back. Like, why is the peloton acting up, right? What fucking danger causes Inigo Elusegui, Stev Kras, Victor Camponante, and Jan Bakelons, right? They say in 2011, Jan Bakelons is not going to win stages, nor is he going to fucking take the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. So why the fuck are you taking the pace? Oh my god, Thomas. If you do not come back in the main group, I am fucking cutting your contract right now. Alright, I'm gonna guess the peloton is gonna sprint now. Alright, go on, Schachmann. Nope, it's Joel Meida, of course. Yeah, won't be Schachmann, that's fair, that, that does make sense. <sighs> right, go on. Catch Nigo Le Segui and please collapse. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're done, we're done. Lenny's gone. Lenny's finished, Thomas Pitcock is finished. This is absolutely horrendous to play. There's literally no pleasure. I enjoyed Parobe more than this. And I never enjoyed Parobe. Edu Dunbar is leading away with Roglic in his wheel. No one behind is going to come back. Roglic or Dunbar, Edu Dunbar is going to win Liege Bastogne Liege. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not even trying to fucking win in the peloton. It doesn't make sense. Junior Philippe will get third. Dan Martin, Michael Woods. Honestly, all right, wait, is Bernal in the first group? I just, like, just want to see. Bernal, Bernal, Bernal. Bernal blocked me, got dropped 40 seconds behind, and then managed to come back. I wasn't that fortunate, but I would have never been, I would have never been dropped had Bernal moved. And that's the issue with, like, Liège and La Flèche Wallonne with some of these variants, right? Sometimes... You just cannot do anything because you just get blocked right, left, and center, or you don't have time to come back. Velasco, right? I fucking crashed here. I crashed. I, I crashed here, with a hundred and sixty kilometers left, and the peloton was already sprinting. Formolo got shot on with me. It doesn't make sense. I, I'm not salty or anything. Trust me. All right, I've had races that went. Much, much worse than this. But it is so not enjoyable to be a spectator rather than an actor. There is nothing you can do. You just watch your rider get dropped or get blocked. And you know that whatever you're going to try, something bad is going to happen. Well, that was a sad end to the episode. Um, Arden's Classic have been absolutely butchered. I think upon, apart from that, I was doing well. Yeah, I was doing well objectives wise. Actually, it was. Objective was a top 25? No, top 20. Top 10, okay. It's not what I wanted, but it's not too bad, I guess. I'm sad, though. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I am. Uh, but we didn't do too bad, right? We we won a stage in the Inter Basque Country. We've won the Ronda. We finished top 10 of our way, which we probably could have won. Um, I cannot really complain, apart from the Ardennes. Like, the three Ardennes classic... Actually, that flesh went very well. La Flèche went much better than some of my own saves. So I'm not going to complain about that, about, about that. But I wished things would have gone differently in, uh, in, uh, in Liège. However, this is where we're going to wrap up the episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, then please do leave a like down below. Uh, if you're new on here, then why not subscribe to the channel? If you haven't done so already, I try to upload very regular content. There should technically be an episode tomorrow. Uh, I cannot guarantee it, but I will try to upload something tomorrow. Uh, it is like 1st of January, I think. So 
I mean, Merry New Year. Merry New Year? No, Happy New Year. There we go. Uh, I'll try, but I can't guarantee anything. And, uh, yeah, have a wonderful New Year's Eve. Eat a lot, drink a lot, and I'll see you next year. My name has been Blacko. Goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold I'm leading. What the mother man need feeding? I don't want to go bombi. Them, I don't know what I do when I go from feeling. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bass. Snapping with a phone and dab. I'll swap them out with the duster. Put them in the drip and sip blockbuster.